Welcome to our webinar from Triage to Strategy, How Modern Mentoring Can Enhance the Career Experience. It's a joint session with Engage to Excel and eMentor Connect. I'm Melissa Munier. I'm the Director of Marketing for Engage to Excel. And I am joined by Nancy Wolk. She is the co-founder and principal at eMentor Connect. She brings 25, over 25 years of experience in a Fortune 50 environment and has passion for leadership development, authentic communication, and learning to help un you understand the fundamentals of uh, mentoring. Nancy, you want to say hello? Yeah, thanks, Melissa, and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Glad to have you. Great. And we also have Jeff Gelinas. He has over 15 years in the human capital management industry. Jeff is currently the Vice President of People, Product, and Marketing at Engage to Excel Group, and he's been with the organization for nearly five years. Jeff? Great. Thank you so much, Melissa. Looking forward to the awesome discussion today. So thank you. Thanks. And we also have Joe Gazdewski. He is newly appointed to his role as a Senior Director for Commercial Effectiveness and Training at Acadia Pharmaceuticals. So congratulations, Joe, on that new position. And he has a long and successful track record across commercial organizations that include sales, marketing, and training. Hey, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for having me today. Thanks, Melissa. Great. Thank you. So just a few things. We, first, we want to um, recognize that the challenge many organizations are facing right now amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And we all hope you and everyone that uh, is in your family are safe and healthy. A few housekeeping items that uh, we'll, get, um, we'll go through and then we'll get started. So first, we encourage you to ask questions through the Q&A um, format uh, function um, as all of our participants are on mute. We will do our best to get to every question, but if we do not answer your question on the live call, we will uh, reach out to you uh, via email personally. Uh, second, the webinar is being broadcast, excuse me, recorded, and we will give access to all of you um, afterwards, um, access to the recording. And then before we get started, I just wanna say thank you to all of our clients that have joined from both the Engage to Excel and Rideau recognition side, as well as eMentor Connects, uh, clients as well. We thank you for your partnership and your business. So let's get started. Jeff, you want to take it over? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Melissa. And thank you so much for eMentor to the eMentor Connect folks for joining in. Certainly, as Melissa said, hope that everyone on this call and their loved ones are doing well and staying safe and healthy. So, you know, a big focus for organizations today, and really COVID uh, doesn't change this at all, is how you are deepening your levels of organizational commitment. And if you go back to, we go way back uh, to the 70s, the 80s, early to mid 90s, at that time, it was really all about employee satisfaction. How satisfied are you with your job? And then about 20 years ago, you really started to see a shift towards engagement. And engagement seemed to really be that, that summary of what organizations most wanted, which is individuals that are motivated and they're willing to apply discretionary effort to accomplish their work. And really engagement was envisioned as that, that mediating variable between various employee attitudes and the overall outcomes of the business. Thus, what really mattered most was getting these high levels of employee engagement. But then, you know, over the past few years, really you've started to see a more, uh, a more nuanced way of summarizing the drivers of engagement, referring to the employee experience. And so, Really the basic idea here with experience is that the goal is still to develop an engaged workforce, but the point of view is that the employee experience is the means to the end of achieving that employee engagement. So you are seeing today a lot more of a focus on experience and really searching for those items that can really influence that experience. And so important to just ground ourselves in the importance of experience today. 
Um, looking at the next slide, now that we've established that we're, we're in a world where experiences do matter so much, uh, we have to understand what we mean by experience. And, and really that ideal employee experience is that, that match, that match between the employee and the employer and what they prefer uh, in, their, in their work environment and being able to fulfill those wants, needs, and, and expectations. One of the things that we're fortunate to have here at engage to excel is uh, our chief scientific, chief scientific officer, Dr. Jack Wiley. He brings really 35 plus years of experience of what employees most want uh, in their experience. And here at engage to excel we, we, we talk about the candidate experience because it's really more than just the employee. Um, it's really the entire life cycle inclusive of the candidate experience. And I would think that really everybody would agree that, you know, people's experiences don't just start and stop when they're added or terminated to an HRIS system. It's an experience that's fluid for that individual, which is why it's important to think of it, you know, throughout that talent continuum. So, you know, over the last 35 years, really in all parts of the world, we've been asking people what they most want from their organization. And believe it or not, 98% of what employees most want can be summarized by the acronym RESPECT. And so RESPECT stands for recognition, which is really a pat on the, on the back or acknowledgement for a job well done from managers, peers, and the organization at large, exciting work, um, that's really a job that's interesting, challenging, and fun. Security, which is not just physical security. It's, it's really confidence that solid work and a, a well-managed organization lead to job security. Uh, we have pay, which is really about fair pay. Education and career growth, that is opportunities to develop skills over the course of a, a productive career. Conditions both positive social and team conditions. So it's not just about uh, the physical workspace, but also you know, being part of an environment that is socially inviting. And then truth, which is really about frank, honest, and transparent communication from the organization, uh, oftentimes primarily you know, senior leadership. So one of the things that I'm excited about is I've gotten to, to learn more about modern mentoring, our topic of the day. I mentioned to our friends from eMentor Connect just how well mentoring touches upon all of the elements of what people want most in their career experience. So let me explain that more, uh, Melissa, on this, on this next slide. Here I go into some examples of what people would say when their wants are met for each of these different dimensions. And what's really interesting, and I think this is gonna dovetail nicely into what you're gonna talk about, Nancy, is that a lot of it really ties back to the elements and benefits of mentoring. It's, an, it's really exciting to see how a tool or program like mentoring can hit on all cylinders of what people most want in their career experience. And how cool is that? Um, because I often think of mentoring as an underutilized tool when it comes to, for instance, employee recognition, which many of the folks um, you know, on this call from the Engage to Excel side specialize in. So you'll see from our, our dialogue with uh, Nancy and Joe today, how mentoring can make people feel more valued, get them more excited, about their work, increasing their feeling that the future is bright for them. In some cases, it may even impact pay because especially for mentees, they may have mentoring built into their competency model, providing opportunities for education and career growth. That's a more obvious one. Increasing feelings of, of belonging to something, part of a team, and, and getting open and honest two-way feedback. So. What I would say, uh, you know, in summary is that, you know, experiences really do matter today. And you can measure 
those experiences. The respect model, for example, is, is, is how uh, we do that. But if you think about how to be strategic and impact as many areas of the experience as possible, mentoring is a really powerful tool for you to consider if you're not doing it today. Um, and with that, Nancy, I think it would be great to turn it over to you to talk a little bit more about what modern mentoring is and some of the, uh, the benefits that can, and outcomes that can be so important to organizations. So Nancy. Yep, thank, yeah, thanks so much, Jeff, and appreciate that. And as we transition to the next slide, I'll, I'll start in that right-hand corner there because this question comes up so often is, you know, what's the difference between a coach, a mentor, and a sponsor? And um, I, I, this is, um, it's not original, uh, but I heard it and it stuck and it really resonates. And people talk about a coach talks to you, a sponsor talks about you, and a mentor talks with you. So kind of an, an easy way to, to differentiate, although it's often a bit of a Venn diagram. There is some, some overlap there. But what is mentoring? And um, interesting, and I'll, I'll toss this to, to Joe for a minute because we were just talking about how mentoring fits in with the 70-20-10 model. And Joe, in your experience, where, where have you seen that application piece? Yeah, so without a doubt, you know, the, uh, the, the mentoring has been a great uh, fit within the organizations that I've been in in order to really engage the employee. And when you talk about those, those different results there, you know, from both the individuals that are doing the mentoring and as well as the mentee, uh, the level of empowerment that they feel by being heard by the mentor feeling appreciated, and then the mentee being able to go to someone potentially outside of their direct line of reports in order to, to partner with them uh, on an even greater basis around certain skills or competencies, et cetera. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Yeah, it's, um, you know, that learning through others is, is so critical. And, you know, for those of you, I know we've got a, a great diverse audience today from talent acquisition to leadership development. And uh, for those of you who have either led workshops or participated, you know, that classroom or in today's COVID world, the virtual classroom uh, is that 10% of our learning. 20% uh, is being matched with a mentor right, that add on to your learning ability. But the 70% happens when you actually apply those learnings on the job. And I think that's one of the opportunities we see that modern mentoring can deliver. Uh, and as Joe said, that ability to uh, really get those unintended consequences of people being able to share their experiences and grow their networks, uh, whether it's being matched with um, people in your same geography or different geographies or your functional area, different areas. Uh, so there's a great opportunity there for growth as well. And then the last, of course, is this is all about, for those of you on today in the HR space, uh, this is about leveraging your most important, your most valuable asset, your internal talent. And when it's done well, uh, the results are about empowering your people, uncovering top talent that you maybe didn't know was there before. Uh, so important, not just attracting, but also retaining that top talent, driving high engagement, which of course is a, a key uh, topic that we're hearing a lot about during COVID-19, and of course, uh, the return on investment that's delivered. So as, as Joe touched on, there are benefits of to both the mentees, mentors, and the organization with mentoring. Uh, let's take a look first at, at the mentees. At the next slide there. And again, I'm, I'm gonna toss it to Joe because he, as, as our client, has truly had that experience of seeing what the benefits have been to their mentees. And Joe, would love to hear from you on, on what you felt some of those were or what you heard they were. Yeah, so thanks, Nancy. Uh, d definitely a couple things I'll start out with that many of you on the call are probably thinking through uh, is one of is, you know, am I going to get a return on this? And more than likely, your supervisor will be asking, you know, what's the end result of the work we're doing? And I'll, I'll get to that in a few slides here, but I would encourage you all to, to measure 
these things. And we have had a wildly positive return on investing in these types of things. As Nancy also talked about, this continuum of learning. You know, I like to think in the L&D world in terms of learning of knowledge, you know, the book smarts that you get, the modules, the training, et cetera. Hopefully the competence that you get maybe when you go to live training and you start to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. And then there's that area of confidence and then ultimately to expertise. And that's really where we found this mentoring fit in to continue instead of it being a one-time event, if you will, I call that training, you really now evolve into a learning continuum. Uh, and that's where having a mentor that you can go to to share those experiences, those learnings, um, helps you apply those, those types of things. So for an individual, when you feel valued in terms of the organization investing in you, that definitely helps build out the culture and your belief in the culture within the organization that your company is supporting things such as this. And then to be able to have somebody that you can openly speak to, you know, be a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more authentic in terms of what your challenges are and have someone on the other end that's truly trying to help and partner with you. Uh, we've seen, you know, great results in that area. And else Thanks, answer, you want to move on to. No, no, sure. yeah, no, that that's terrific. It, it, it's interesting because um, it's especially with the understanding of organizational culture, I think in the past, you know, people were hired and there are still companies hiring out there. We're seeing a lot of that. Um, and people were immediately brought into a culture, whereas now uh, you've got that virtual culture that they're being brought into. So uh, a unique need in this virtual time and, and a, a great way that it can be filled. So appreciate those examples. Yeah, so let's move on to the mentors and love to hear hear your thoughts there too, Joe. Yeah, so now from the from the mentor state of, uh, of mind, so, you know, as you again, bring it back to the, the learning continuum, you know, you, you learn something, hopefully then you apply it or do it, uh, and then ultimately to kind of fill, fill or complete the learning circle, then you teach that skill. So for these individuals, this is that opportunity for them to, again, complete that learning continuum by teaching somebody else the skills that they have. Where we've found this works the, the best is when uh, the mentor is assigned specific competencies or skills that they've been acknowledged or recognized by superiors of being very strong at and they're passionate around. So for example, let's use facilitation skills. If somebody just loves facilitating, maybe they were a trainer in a past life, and you know now they have that opportunity to have a mentee who really wants to evolve and improve in that area, they're getting to a speak from a place that gives them great passion and energy. And then also you connect that with the level of engagement. So for somebody, I think somebody in the chat was talking about where does all this stuff fit within someone's career? You know, here's where someone maybe has found where they want to be for a period of time, but this also allows them to give back beyond the day-to-day -day of the job and to feel valued and appreciated uh, and engaged at a completely different level than what they're doing during the, the typical um, aspect of their job. And all at the same time, they're, they're growing their influence sphere and hopefully starting to engage and get to know people throughout different parts of the organization, different parts of the country, et cetera. Yeah, it's it's so interesting, Joe, because I know um, even in your programs, you know, so many times in mentoring, people think as a mentee that they're getting so much more out of it than the mentor. And time and time again, uh, you know, these are just great examples you've given. We hear that the mentors get as much and sometimes even more than the mentees. And uh, I think, Joe, in, in a lot of your programs, your mentors would say, hey, can I do this again? Uh, because they were getting so much out of it. Yes. Absolutely. That's been, yeah. that's been great to see again, because we're asking yeah. them to do more than their, their day to day job. And they're the ones hand raising to say, can I please do that? Can I do that again? 
Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, you know, sometimes for the mentors, sometimes as a mentor, that can grow into being a sponsor. Doesn't always, but, but certainly can. Yeah, so, so let's um, hop to the next slide. Um, what, you know, benefits to the organization? Uh, you know, always an interesting question because, you know, particularly now where our organizations are supporting us, but we're a little distance from them, uh, but, but still a really important piece of what having mentoring in, or, in an organization can bring to its culture. And would, would love to hear your thoughts there, Joe. Yeah, so I've alluded to this a little bit as we talked through the benefits for the mentor as well as the the mentee. Uh, without a doubt, you know, doing something like this more formally within your organization speaks to its culture. And you know, when you read a lot of the different articles out there about why people stay and what they're looking for within an organization, being developed is at the very top. Of that, and again, whether mentor or mentee, as Nancy just alluded to, both are learning through this process. Both are being developed. Both are being engaged at a different level within the company. So, anytime this is being an example where you can show that investment in your people, you know that will definitely come back to you in in spades. Uh, the other piece, again, is in terms of the talent pipeline. What a great way to start to work with your individuals that maybe you're starting to consider moving from leading self to leading others and maybe potentially leading others to leading the business as more of an operational leader and start to give them that exposure to others that maybe are in those uh, positions to you know help expand their skill sets, their competencies, and then back to this idea of kind of showcasing that you believe in, in learning as a continuum and expanding out potentially some of the events that you're putting in place. And I'll speak to this in a moment, how we've taken a lot of the different training events that we've done, added on mentoring to and continue that, that learning way beyond the classroom and pull that into you know, sometimes really strong relationships that go beyond the, uh, the mentor-mentee relationship. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's interesting, and, and I'm struck by, by your examples, um, even going back to, to Jeff's slide about uh, the respect model uh, and the attributes around respect and the link to mentoring, because so much of what you share, Joe, uh, what I hear is that connection to, to recognition, to people feeling like they're part of a team, uh, that two-way communication. Uh, and even to the point, I think, uh, you know, you had said that for individuals, having that other person to talk to, maybe not always their manager, but, but somebody who can give them a perspective on a topic that's important to them. So definitely some clear connections there and and then truly adding that excitement to the job that's that's helping their personal growth so thank thank you for uh connecting that for us and and jeff um i'll I'll pass it back to you uh for our next slide there okay great And, and you know one of the things that i mentioned nancy and joe early on is that you know from a career experience perspective it's important to think about that candidate experience as well. And so we have some data that we're bringing in here from our Trendicators normative database um, that we did actually this year uh, in in Q1, right at the end of uh, February, early March. And the question that we asked is, how likely are you to speak with a mentor from an organization where there are jobs that interest you to become more knowledgeable about the organization its recruitment process, and career growth opportunities. And so you see here just an overwhelming majority of folks that would be interested in speaking with a mentor. Uh, really only uh, 7% saying that they, were, they would be unlikely to want to speak with a mentor. But really you have uh, just about 90% or so that are either likely, somewhat likely, or, or highly likely. So what is, just from your experience, uh, Joe or, or Nancy, can you talk to us a little bit about 
how you've seen examples of mentoring work really well in that candidate experience, especially if you think about that time between, you know, new hire, uh, you know, that offer acceptance in first day on the job, that can be a time when you're very susceptible to, to drop off. How can a mentor be really helpful in this phase? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there, Jeff, and um, just speak to particularly in that, you know, that whole career experience, right? That from, as you say, from pre-hire to retire. So what we see in that recruitment space and in that new hire space is, you know, those of you on, on this call, you know the statistics, you know how important it is to have a great onboarding program so that uh, people are more likely to stay. Uh, the percentages of people looking for a new position, if you don't have a new or have a good onboarding program, are, are frightening at best. Um, and so what we see is for onboarding is adding that buddy or mentor to, for the new hire. Um, it's about inculcating that culture from another individual in the organization in the form of a buddy or mentor uh, that can truly help uh, to make it a more positive experience, particularly in those first six months that are such an important time. So, so Jeff, absolutely, in that, in that recruitment process, that new hire process, uh, it's a critical element. That's great. That's, that's very, very helpful. And, and Jeff, if I could add, so uh, where we've found you know, mentorship be absolutely critical is in that early stage of someone coming on board. Uh, for us, uh, we've leveraged field sales trainers, for example, and when selecting those field sales trainers, you know, we really look for people that put the we above I uh, and the, this idea of helping make others within the organization better and putting the others before themselves and establishing that they truly are the face of the organization. And that especially in the early days, you know, new hires will, will struggle and challenge themselves and uh, they'll need that support, you know, heavy support and heavy direction in terms of situational leadership. And then by being that subject matter expert, you know, they're really establishing where that bar lies in terms of excellence and expertise, if you will, throughout the organization. And by by seeing someone model that and being wildly accessible and being able to operate at such a high level, uh, we found that you know, that engages our new hires and you know, really reinforces this is the place that I, want, that I want to be and I want to one day be like my mentor. That's great. Thank you for for sharing that, Joe. And just want to remind folks, if you have any questions for any of the, the presenters, feel free to use the Q&A function. We'll take questions um, as we go. Yeah, and Jeff, I was just going to speak to, actually, just to, to pop back one slide, because I think that um, an, an interesting conversation that uh, Joe and I have had that, you know, certainly want to share is, around when we look at that look at mentoring and the experience is the matching that happens during that and the importance of it and um i think the words are so much better from joe because he's he's experienced it uh but how important is it that you have a good matching process for the mentee and mentor yeah so uh if i were to say what's been the secret sauce for us it's been finding the mentors again that have a specific passion specific strength they're identified as people that are really skilled in this area and then understanding from uh, the mentee what are they looking to learn about what do they want to know more how do they want to improve within whether their current role or a potential future role and when you put those two together I mean, the, the, the email strings that I've been a part of and the voicemail messages and the phone calls and the, the people capturing me in the hallway to talk about what that experience has been from both parts, um, that's where you, you really see things uh, foster a great connection. Uh, and on the flip, when you just assign someone, 
you know, hey, Tom, you're going to be paired up with Susie and you two need to talk. Uh, and maybe there isn't that kind of desire to participate. It's a topic that isn't something that gives them great energy. Uh, and then you don't see that that spark occur. So I'd say matching like interests with like strength and passion is really where you see that mentor mentee experience take off and flourish. That's great. And in uh, Nancy and Joe, we actually do have a question coming in from uh, Ania Schmidt. Thank you so much for asking a question. I think it's going to be a great segue, Nancy, into your next slide. What do you say to those organizations that during COVID uh, are really struggling just to stay afloat and for whom mentoring isn't currently top, top of mind? And so I think that that's part of getting from that triage to strategy. And I know that you've got some good uh, tips for folks on this call as they think about that. Yeah, so so uh, great question. And um, certainly, you know, so many clients and so many um, companies right now, the focus has been on triage, right? So pre-COVID, we were all working strategically. Things were moving along well. COVID hits. We, everybody goes into a triage state of mind. Um, because that's what you have to do. It's about, you know, getting people access virtually, getting people training virtually, changing our total mindsets. And where we are right now is really, we've been in that triage, we've been getting that done. But when you read the news, what we're seeing is there is going to be that point where it's going to be time and very soon to be strategic again. And so we want to be ready uh, for when that time comes. Uh, and I think probably everybody on this call is anxious for that time to come as well. So um, while it may not be that immediate top of mind, what we are hearing for those companies is they want their people to be connected at this time. And you can't connect with them 24-7. So mentoring is a way for people to connect, but it's a way for them to collaborate. And in many cases, it can be a way for them to continue their self-development so that when the doors do open again, people are ready to hit the ground running. So that would be my, my answer to the question. Um, and before we move on to the next slide, I just want to touch, Jeff, on the, the career growth piece of your question as well around the survey. And I think that so often, you know, we talk about that recruitment, we talk about new hires, um, but there's an important population that, that mentoring hits as well. And so whether you're a, a Gen Y through a baby boomer, there's opportunities where mentoring can be beneficial, whether it's transferring knowledge between individuals, whether it's keeping people engaged. Uh, there's an opportunity throughout that entire career experience for mentoring to be beneficial for your people. And so I'd like to now, as we transition to the next slide, is uh, to talk about uh, what are some of the outcomes that you can expect to see uh, associated with mentoring programs. And uh, Joe, I'll have you, have you speak to this, if you would, please. Yeah, Nancy, thank you. Uh, so I, I rooted this in the beginning, and uh, for many of you, this is the kind of thing, stuff that your supervisors will probably be asking about when you're thinking about uh, you know, taking on something like uh, a mentoring program within your organization. And, you know, uh, we've taken on mentoring as a critical part and a key element, again, of our learning continuum in almost every single aspect of training that we develop, everything from our new hires to uh, our field trainers that get trained and developed and eventually, you know, our, our bench strength and talent to progress into roles of increased scope and responsibility, our emerging leaders that are identified out there, uh, masterminds, a group of people that have said, I, I don't necessarily want to lead others, but I do like influencing my peers and leading across and influencing upward within the organization. And then also, you know, we have lots of input teams whether it be to marketing or training or other aspects of the business. Uh, so for all of these different groups that we've put together, we've made mentoring part of that learning journey. 
And, you know, here's a couple of the things that we've seen is, you know, retention, you know, how much does it cost to employ a new employee? What's the loss also in terms of relationships and just getting up to speed and those types of things. And for the groups that participated in our mentoring programs, we only saw a 0.5% turnover rate versus those that weren't part of these programs uh, that in general, we had a turnover rate of about 13%. You know, a lot of these individuals were sales employees. We saw about a $10,000 increase in bonus achievement versus their peers. And then also about 10 positions uh, ranking higher than their, than their peer group that weren't participating in this type of, of program. And you put all that together with the anecdotal feedback that you receive from individuals talking about how much they value the conversations, how great it is to build a connection with somebody clear across to the other side of the country that they've heard of, but never had this opportunity to speak to on a routine basis. And again, when you match like with like, the willingness to share resources or to share you know, their cell phone number to text or call, you know, outside of maybe the more kind of formal discussions that are out there. Um, all those pieces together, again, come back to, to tie to the question a moment ago, you know, right now with COVID, you know, this is probably one of the greatest opportunities for true leaders to be as authentic and vulnerable and real as possible. And there are people that are in different places in terms of managing with remote work, managing with all the complexities of, I have a, dan a daughter doing dance upstairs in the loft right now for ballet class. I have a son doing homeschooling. We've, you know, there's a lot of things going on. And again, to have individuals that you can go to and speak to as it relates to just working remote you know, engaging individuals in a remote environment, utilizing virtual platforms that are now the norm. You know, how do we best do those things? And again, showing that your support in those types of resources, uh, this is probably the best time I'd say ever to really show our support in this collaborative communication and mentoring types of programs. Nancy? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Joe. Um, no, appreciate that. And yeah, it's it's interesting as as in in listening to you speaking to it. You know, it's all about changing the I to we, right? So illness goes to wellness, <laughs> um, and it's all about just just changing that one word and the approach. So thank you for for sharing the the details there. Um, and so we've had a couple questions coming in about, you know, the programs, and I'd like to take this, this question that came in about, is this a program that institutions of higher ed have used for seniors and young alum? And I think this is a great uh, bridge uh, to the next slide, and, and the answer is yes. Um, so this slide is very simple. You'll be getting the recording, but, you know, whether you're an academic institution, <clears throat> or uh, industry organization association, uh, the answer is yes. And, you know, it's all about, first of all, talking about those, those pain points that Jeff was identifying at the beginning. And once you identify the pain points, I'm really outlining your objective. And once you have your program objectives, then the four M's very easily and quickly come into to play. Um, it's about, first of all, determining if you want to do a one-to-one -one program, one-to-many, circles, volunteer. Uh, the beauty of modern mentoring is you do have options and you can run all these programs simultaneously. And then as, as Joe so eloquently spoke to, the matching piece is important. Bottom line, research shows when people um, are involved in the matching process, the engagement is much higher. And that's why, you know, Joe's seen what 95% engagement in his programs, which is superb. And then motivation. We're all busy, even in the COVID days. Uh, we all get busy and we might miss things, but uh, with today's modern mentoring, you can have different ways that you can motivate your participants. And that's what can help drive high participation as well. 
And then, of course, metrics. And, and Joe so nicely spoke to those about some of the, his metrics that he did himself, uh, looked at it internally, which to me are the most valuable. Um, but the beauty is, again, today is it's not just about saying, you know, how's your mentoring program going? Yeah, I think it's going well. It's about actually having the data analytics behind it. Uh, so some, some easy tips as you look to, to launch a program that's going to drive connection, collaboration, self-development uh, amid this COVID time. So with that, I'd, I'd love to turn it back to you, Jeff. That's great. Uh, Nancy and Joe, thank you so much. We do have time for some questions, so don't be shy if you want to use the, the Q&A function. Um, really one thing that is sort of on my mind, uh, Nancy and Joe, is, you know, as you think about, I kind of think about the question that came in around, you know, with everything going on, um, you know, what do you think is the best way to, to, to get stakeholder buy-in for mentoring programs? Can you talk about any advice that you have for someone on the call that's thinking about doing uh, a mentoring program? advice for, for getting that buy-in from senior leadership. And, and Joe, you've probably done this uh, more frequently, uh, sort of yeah. that hands-on. So yeah, so we can speak to it generally, but love to hear some of your specifics. Yeah, so uh, for, for me, probably two parts. Uh, I'd say one, uh, you know, st starting with a, uh, a relatively smaller size group initially, uh, is probably the easiest way to dip your toe in the water, to be real, uh, to get them to believe in what you're proposing, just like, just like anything else. And the other one is where I found people you know, easily get to is to engage the individuals that have been identified to take on roles of increased scope and responsibility. So if you do have a group of people that have already been identified in terms of talent pipeline, they're in emerging leader program, uh, they're, you're investing in them and already in attending some form of training, um, whatever that might be, and taking it from a place of let's take this event, this one time, maybe it's a one-day course or a three-day course. And I think every one of you on the, on the phone, if you were to self-reflect to say you attended a course and then no one ever talked about the learning that was uh, taken away in that course ever again. Um, and, you know, did you really apply the things that you took a day out of your job to learn? Potentially, if you traveled somewhere to do that, now you're talking even more at time out of work and explaining how this can keep that learning alive and help people ensure that they're actually applying the principles that you felt by investing them and in attending a training, keeping those principles alive and working with other individuals that have you, we've all acknowledged are respected and skilled in those areas to again expand that learning journey from a day or two to six months to a year to beyond. That's great. Thank you very much, Joe. And we do have one more question here. Uh, I know we're just about out of time, but uh, thank you, Janice. Uh, the comment here is we're trying to match college students to industry leaders in advanced manufacturing. Currently, our manual system has been very complex to implement, particularly for matching and getting mentors and mentees engaged. Would this system be applicable to such a program? Yeah, thanks, Janice, and, and great question. And uh, absolutely. So, I mean, one of the things that we saw very early on is particularly when uh, companies, individuals, institutions are doing what you're doing, right? You, you're you sitting in a room for hours, if not days, to match people. And what this can do is with an automated algorithm is that we can, in seconds, is match people for you. Uh, and, and the beauty as well is that you can look at the matches and approve them. You can have the system match. And so this can be done very quickly and based on what is entered for your participants um, so that they will then be engaged. So that matching process can, in effect, Janice, also um, people are more engaged because they're being matched on the topics 
that are important to them that Joe was talking about. Um, and then the other piece is that after people are matched, uh, with Modern Mentoring, you can serve up content for people to talk about. You can pull through learnings. And you can also have um, multiple ways that you can continue to engage them through resources and different aspects of the mentoring program. Great question. Great. Very good question. Well, it looks like that is about all the time that we have today, folks. Um, Melissa, do you want to just go over any final housekeeping? And again, Joe and, and Nancy, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, yes, thank you for uh, to everybody that joined us, Nancy, Jeff, Joe. Uh, we appreciate your time and your insights. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, this has been recorded, so we'll make that available to you. And if we didn't get to all of the questions, I know there's still some coming in, we will make sure that we get to you um, via email and answer those questions for you. Uh, with that, uh, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And uh, you and your family, friends, coworkers, stay safe out there. Be well. Thank you very much.